Now let's cover the topic of eye injuries, of which there can be a couple of main types. One is an object embedded in the eye, the other is a chemical in the eye. In this case, we're going to be first addressing the object in the eye. In this case, we know that the worker was by a grinding wheel and potentially one of the brushes may have flown off the wheel and embedded in their eye. They're in a great deal of pain. We've gone ahead and assessed for seeing safety. Our gloves are on and also the patient is not suffering from airway breathing or circulation problems at this time, so they're remaining fairly stable. We guided them to a place where they can be sat down carefully and now treated and here's what we do. We find a cup. It's important to understand that we want to actually get something that goes over the wounded eye so that we don't put any pressure on the object that's embedded in the eye. Um, the second thing too is if you have a medical grade cup, that's fine, but you could also use a Dixie cup or a drinking cup, a styrofoam cup, a coffee cup. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be overly large because that's gonna cause some problems in trying to bandage around it. So the smaller, the better, but we do want it to be at least deep enough that it keeps the pressure off from that eye. The second point to make is that we wanna bandage both eyes shut because eyes tend to move together. So if we leave one eye unbandaged and so that the person can see, when they move that eye, they will also be moving the affected eye and we don't wanna cause further harm. The third point and lastly, we can have the patient assist us when we're having them hold the cup or hold things in place while we bandage. So here we are, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this cup over your affected eye, ma'am. Go ahead and take your hand away. Now can you hold that cup in place? Now the second thing I'm gonna do, and be sure to talk to your patient. They're kind of blind at this point, so you wanna be really communicating with them instead of just making them guess what they're feeling, like now I'm putting a cup on your eye and now I'm gonna throw a bandage on your eye. Explain what you're gonna do before you do it so we don't shock them. And then the other thing to remember too is once this is all bandaged, they're blind. We're gonna to have to lead them as if they are blind, making sure to remind them where to step, how to step so they don't fall down. And ideally, we're gonna transport this patient via EMS because there's things that we can do in route that might not be able to be done in a private car. But if the EMS is not an option, private car may work as long as the patient is stable and doesn't have any other injuries that would stop them from being transported. So I took another four by four gauze. If I had an actual eye bandage, you could use that certainly, but a four by four gauze is not a problem either. Ma'am, I'm gonna put this over your non-affected eye and then you can hold that in place. And I'm just gonna wrap a gauze around both of them. Go ahead and let go of the cup side. I'm gonna put a bandage around. Let me know if that hurts at all, okay? Not the eye that's hurt, but I mean as I'm wrapping, any new pain. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap around this. You can let go. And I'm just gonna continue here. I know that's over your nose, but I'll move that in just a second, okay? I'm gonna continue to bandage around. And probably just a good couple times, you just wanna make sure that the cup is not gonna slip. And then once you come back around to the other side, we tuck the access in underneath the bandage as long as it's not putting too much pressure or you could always tape it in place. Is that fairly comfortable, ma'am? I'm gonna go ahead and lift this over your nose so you can breathe okay. Now the patient is packaged and ready to go. Now we're gonna be doing our secondary survey which is doing a double check. This is a pretty distracting injury so it could take our eyes our eyes as rescuers off from other things that may be happening. Maybe she fell after she got the injury in the eye and hit her head. So we're always gonna be assessing for level of consciousness, airway, breathing, circulation, signs of shock, and treating accordingly as we get this person into definitive care and back on track. And now let's take a look at the other type of eye injury, which is chemical burns. Whether a dry chemical or a liquid chemical, it can cause a great amount of damage to this eye and the mucous membrane of the eye in a relatively short amount of time. So getting the person to a position where we can actually start to dilute the chemical as soon as possible is essential. Now we would like to use a balanced solution as far as pH goes, but if you only have the tap water out of a sink or you have bottled water, drinking water, anything is gonna be better than nothing. If it's a dry chemical, we're gonna brush as much of the excess off as we can before we begin to dilute it and flush the eye. If it's a liquid, we're just gonna begin flushing. A key point here, if it's in one affected eye, we want to go from the inside of the eye and rinse to the outside. We don't wanna cross-contaminate eyeballs. We don't wanna flush from outside in as it can then run over the bridge of the nose into the non-affected eye. Now we've got chemical exposure to both eyes. 
Remember that we're gonna flush for no less than 20 minutes to dilute this and to bring the solution into a, a position where it's not causing damage. We're gonna transport this person to an emergency room as soon as possible, and we're gonna watch for other life-threatening issues. Remember, the chemical that went in the eye could have also gotten into the mouth, nose, or airway, so we don't wanna take for granted that this is an isolated injury. So we're gonna to continue to assess our patient from head to toe, looking for life-threatening um, situations like airway, breathing, circulation, or shock symptoms, and treat accordingly, and then continue to, to flush those eyeballs out so that we can get the chemical out and stop the burning from happening.